Welcome to this episode of Just One Thing. In today's edition, I'm going to talk about what is the cloud. My name is Adam Graholsky, and I'm a technical evangelist with RBA Consulting. So to first understand what the cloud is, we need to understand the current challenges we're facing in IT. And a lot of this has to do around capacity or the ability to handle variable loads. So if we take kind of this little chart here and we look at kind of our time on the bottom and IT capacity running vertically and we predict this kind of a load forecast, maybe, maybe it's over a year. What we then usually do in traditional IT is we try to buy capacity for that. So we, we have a capital expenditure and we go and we buy a lot of hardware. But we don't buy the hardware just to meet the load. We kind of give ourselves some headroom there so that if whatever our business model may be, if we're very successful and we have times where we actually go above the anticipated load, we can handle it hopefully. It's usually a guess, but hopefully we can do it. So then what happens is over time, as the year goes on or the quarter, whatever, however you're measuring this, you'll actually have your load kind of hit your systems, right? And what, and what you see here is obviously we don't stick right to that load forecast we came up with. There are times when we go above it, times when we go below it. And that's the problem. So oftentimes, um, in many cases, we have too much power. We've allocated headroom for those instances where we want to make sure we're not under provisioned. Well, what that means is that there's a, a number of scenarios, and we have customers uh, where we see this quite often, where you just have too much power. So what that means is you basically overspent um, for what you needed. However, there are also times, because we kind of have a, a fixed amount of capacity, where we don't have enough power. So there could be spikes in load, maybe some servers go down, wh whatever it is, there, there will be times when you don't have enough power. And what that can often result in is kind of screaming managers, screaming customers, trying to figure out why can't we respond quickly enough. So with that kind of as the backdrop and trying to understand kind of why, why these variable loads happen, we can identify four common usage patterns um, that the cloud will help us address. The first is an on-again, off-again pattern where you may have times of inactivity and then times of lots of activity. An example here would be a clinical trial uh, run in the United States where patients come into doctors to receive treatment, um, but oftentimes doctors' offices are only open Monday through Friday. They're closed Saturday and Sunday. If you have software and servers supporting these trials, they'll be running Saturday and Sunday, but they won't have any any load on them. So this is going to be one of those cases where on the weekends we may be over provision. But come Monday morning they'll pick up at their usual loads. You then also have a growing fast scenario where maybe we'll take the clinical trial again as it, as it provides a good, good use case for this. Um, a clinical trial may start in say five hospitals, just kind of five regional hospitals. Uh, a pharmaceutical company just wants to get some initial data around their, their next greatest treatment. After they run it, maybe a few weeks, maybe a few months, depending on the treatment, they'll say, hey, let's really turn this thing on and just start to gather a lot of data, at which point they may want to expand it to a thousand hospitals around the world. So, And they can grow very fast. Once again, if you're writing software, you have software to support these trials, you need to be able to grow with them, handle that load. The, la the second to last scenario is called unpredictable bursting. This is where you may have a spike in activity that you didn't see. Uh, maybe something goes viral on Facebook or whatever it is. You just have an unpredictable burst. Um, and these can be, obviously they're unpredictable, so you don't know when they're going to happen, but they can be very hard to handle as you kind of have to scramble to find resources and hopefully you can, you know, patch together a server here or a server there, that'll enable you to handle that burst. But what often happens is by the time you've patched together resources to handle the burst, the burst is over. And finally, you have something uh, more along the lines of predictable bursting. This may be um, a good example of this may be uh, your company's time entry system, or you know every Friday, you know, at four o'clock or every Monday morning at 9 a.m., you're going to have a lot of people hitting the system at once to, to enter their time cards and kind of finish off and, and submit. But during the rest of the week, it kind of goes into a lull until Friday comes back again where you see that kind of use. So this is a little easier to plan for if you know the metrics of your system. But once again, what we have really here are four common patterns where there are times of inactivity, times of lots of activity, times of more activity than we expected that can 
causes various pain points, either spending too much or not having enough capacity. And this is where the cloud helps. So how, how does the cloud help in this scenario? Well, you'll see here, I'll come back to, to our, our load curve. And what the cloud does is it gives us this ability to have capacity on demand. Now, the way to, a good way to think of it outside of computing in general is to think about electricity, right? So before we had this big kind of common electrical grid and everyone had electricity running into their homes, if you were a manufacturer and say you made great widgets, right? What you would have to do if you wanted to produce those widgets with electricity is that you would actually have to generate your own electricity. What this meant is that you would have to take money from your business, from your operations, and put it towards something that's not part of your core business, not part of widget making. It's actually part of electrical generation. So if you wanted to build something like a hydroelectric dam, however you're going to generate electricity, you had to sink cost into that that's really outside of what you do best, which is awesome widget making. Then came the electrical grid. All of a sudden, people could, in business, manufacturers, once again, could just essentially plug their machines, plug their factories into the grid. They didn't have to produce electricity anymore, and they only had to pay for what they actually used um, and when they used it. So the result of that would be really kind of a, a utility model, right, where you just you pay for what you use when you use it. That way business, so the great widget-making company, can focus all their cash, really, or most of their cash, on making widgets rather than investing in electrical generation. So that's what the cloud is, right? The cloud is about giving you a utility model for computing where you pay for what you need or what you use when you actually use it. So the result of that, as you can see here with this yellow line on the curve, is that you can have capacity on demand. If I need more servers, great. If I need less servers, great. I can turn them on and off and only pay for them when I actually use them. The result, lower capital expenditures. I'm no longer investing in data centers and hardware, kind of guessing at what I'm going to need for the quarter or the year. I, because I know I can turn those resources on and off as needed and just pay for them as I use them. No capital laying idle. So a lot in lots of cases, you'll see here my actual load is below my forecast. So I don't have those resources just sitting around idle. I, I turn them off. So if I was running five servers, I can shut them down to three and I'm only paying for three servers. Similarly, when my when my load goes over what my forecast is, I don't have to scramble to try and find hardware to meet the needs of my screaming customers. Instead, I can envision a knob, just literally turn that knob up and have more servers instantly. So what that really does with that knob is imagine you go to your server room, your data center today, and, and you have a knob outside the door. And you're just sitting at your desk and someone calls and says, hey, we've got a big spike in activity. You just turn the knob and say, hey, all right, let me turn that up to 10. I'll get 10 more servers in there. And then when that when that spike goes down, turn it back down again to five to whatever you need. And the point is, you're only paying for what you use. When I provision five servers and I only use them for an hour, I only pay for five servers for one hour rather than having five servers for three years. I just pay for them when I need them. So how does the cloud enable this scenario? Well, there are kind of three different models around cloud computing that can provide different levels of functionality based on what you need. The first is an infrastructure as a service model. This is um, kind of a standard hosting model, if you will. The hoster will provide you everything from, they've got their facilities and networking, infrastructure and hardware, um, but beyond that you're kind of responsible for everything else that goes on. You then have the platform as a service model. This is where you build applications upon a platform provided to you by the host or by the provider. So the, the, they do a lot more in terms of management and they abstract a lot of control or take a lot of control away from you, but it enables you to just focus on building your applications and storing your data. Finally, you have the software as a service model, where in this case you don't necessarily build anything. You actually just buy a ser buy software as a service and you, you maybe configure it. You can do some customizations, but you're not really building a solution on top of it common example of this would be something like Microsoft's Office 365, where you're paying for that software as a service, but you're not really building it. Whereas the platform as a service model applies to the Windows Azure platform, which we'll talk about in a future episode here. So another good way to kind of understand what the cloud is and what the models are 
is to kind of look in terms of what you know and look at levels of abstraction or kind of what you manage and what a provider will manage. So we'll start with package software, something you, you, you're you pretty familiar with already. When you have package software on-premise, you're responsible for the whole thing. I mean, the lowest level I have here is networking, but you could take it down a level in terms of you could look at internet, utilities, facilities, and then networking, storage, servers, virtualization, all the way up to the application. You are responsible for managing and maintaining the whole stack there. So there's a lot of an investment, not just in the software, but in the support uh, surrounding the software. You did then have the infrastructure as a service model. What you see here is that that provider, the vendor, takes a bit more control away from you. So they'll handle networking storage. So they'll have a SAN set up. They'll have the actual physical servers, and they may manage some kind of virtualization, which is Hyper-V or VMware, whatever they use. But beyond that, you're still responsible for quite a bit. You still have to ma manage the OS. So you've got to do the installs. You've got to manage the patching, the upgrading, et cetera, any middleware components and runtime components you have. And then, of course, you're, you're still responsible for the data that your applications use. Now, as we move for, to platform as a service, we see that actually the vendor is taking on a lot more responsibility. So not only are they handling virtualization, they're also managing and patching the OS. They're handling any middleware components as well as runtimes on those machines, enabling you just to write your applications and store your data to target the platform they provide. And finally, as software as a service, Everything, the application data all the way down to networking facility is managed by the vendor. You just kind of configure it or maybe make some tweaks to it, but the vendor manages everything. And the idea is that as you move from the left to the right here, you're giving up more control, but you're also getting various more and more cost savings the further you move to the right. That's it. So high level overview of cloud computing. Um, in the next episode, we'll actually take a look at how Windows Azure fits into cloud computing.